there we go. Okay. So we start recording, and this, so this is the overflow, and I have no idea what episode we're on because the last one we tried to record um, didn't record because it got cut off. So I know I was looking for the last one on your site there, and I couldn't find the darn thing. I nope, I went to retrieve it, and it said that it was lost. <laughs> uh -oh. So that one was just for us. <laughs> Maybe Satan doesn't want it on Facebook. Evidently. So, okay, I'm going to share my screen. So, as I was telling you before I started the recording, okay. um, I was reading, and I asked God what what to uh, what to go over, and that and Psalms um, 37 just like fell open, and I started reading it, and I was like, wow, it was very encouraging, and definitely for today. So, I'm going to share my screen, and I read it in the NI, NLT actually. NLV or NL? NLT, so the New Living Translation is what I read it in the first time. And I think I'll go ahead and read that one, which is the center on this one. So, yeah, I, I just like the way it really worded it. So it says, um, the, a song of wisdom it says, don't follow after the wicked ones or be jealous of their wealth. Don't think for a moment they're better off than you which is a trap we all fall in, have fallen into at one point or another. <laughs> they and their short-lived success will soon shrivel up and quickly fade away like grass clippings in the hot sun. Keep trusting in the Lord and do what is right in his eyes. Fix your heart on the promises of God and you will be secure feasting on his faithfulness. Well, can I... Uh... Stop you there for a second. It, well, first of all, did we, we pray or we're not going to pray? Or? Oh, sorry. Yeah, we was going to pray. I guess we'll pray at the end. <laughs> if, if you're going to pray, go ahead. But I, I've got some thoughts about what we were talking about. We can pray at the end. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, okay. One of my first thoughts after I read through this was what's been going on lately. And I think people, if you're watching, I want you to just take a deep breath. Let God envelop you. We want to focus on him because what's happened here is a lot of evil. In All this around country. us. We don't need to focus on that. Focus on God. Mm -hmm. What he can do for you. What you can do for him and what he wants you to do. Let's focus on that. But take a deep breath and go into a prayer mode. That's my thoughts. Yeah. Well, and then, like, it's, like, the first thing it says is don't follow after the wicked ones. Or right. be jealous of their wealth. I mean, right now, what we're seeing in the world is a lot of wicked. <laughs> yes. Right now, it's, it's a battle between um, godly um, and, and God and, and um, his precepts and Satan and the wicked and what they want. And yeah. so this really, this whole psalm really stuck out to me because... You know, a lot of people are jealous and, and kind of seek after the wicked because, well, they've got it made. Well, you read the rest of the Psalms and you find out they're not going to have it made. They, it might be like it, it says they are short-lived. They, they and their short-lived success will soon shrivel up and quickly fade away. Well, when you, when you, it, but they don't. When you grab a handful of sand, what happens? It squeaks away. And that's what they've done. They think they've won. Yep. But really, it's a disaster for everybody. Yeah. But yep. In, in that sense, the difference is that a lot of people on the other side, unfortunately, don't have God to look forward to. They don't have God to calm them. Right. We do. Yep. And I, it's not good. Right. But we also know that God is good. Yeah. And that he will eventually... We know who wins in the end. I'm sorry, what? We know who it wins in the end, and that's where we right. need to our, our, our focus on. That's right. And he says, right. you know, in verse 3, he says, Keep trusting in the Lord and do what is right in his eyes. Fix your heart on the promises of God, and you will be secure, feasting on his faithfulness. So it doesn't matter what's going on around us. It doesn't matter... Um, what the wicked are doing or what, if they think they won or, you know, if even, even if it looks like they've won, which 
you know, the looks can be deceiving. Um, it's that, you know, if we fix our eyes on God, he's going to be our security. He is our security. And he's going to give us, um, we will feast on his faithfulness or his goodness. Um, the other one on the other side says, um, take, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. You know, he, he puts those things there. I mean, he's not going to let us fail. No, no and, and that's, that's the point. I mean, we don't want to get sucked into uh, something saying, well, they won, we lost, that kind of stuff. Because no. they really didn't win. No. And, and that's, the, that's the, the problem. They think they, they only want a, a, an election. Elections come and go like, like air. Towards the, one minute and it's gone the next. Right. Towards the end of this, it, it talks about going to trial and, the, and the, the, the righteous will be released, you know. And um, it reminds me of, of the, the uh, trial against Trump and they tried to impeach him. Right. Yeah, they got the word that the impeach, but he's still in office. Right. So exactly, and that's uh, that was the difference. You know, they, they, the thing is, what they haven't done is what our hearts. Exactly. God still has the heart of a lot of people in this country. We, Seventy million people we can't, looked against exactly. what they are for. Right. We can't put our trust in man anyway. And if we are putting our trust in man, there's a very easy, it's very easy to fall into that following the wicked because men are, are fallible. You know, we need to put our trust in God. And that's what he's saying. You know, if we put our trust in him, he's our security. He's where we get all of that. And I mean, he holds the riches in his hands. You know, he has the, everything that we need in his hand. And that's where we get that. Not from man. We get that from God. Well, and, and here's the thing. I, I've, as you know, I've, I'm, I'm somewhat politically motivated. Not that I really like it, but I'm, I've been involved in it. And one of the things that always strikes me is that people have uh, other gods. Right. And one of them I've mentioned before is science. Well, I mean, they think science, and they talk like it. it's a god. They talk like it's infallible, but it isn't. Right. It's created by man. Everything that man has made one day either has failed or will fail, period. Yep. There is no equivocation on this point. Yep. It will fail. You can build the greatest building, the most powerful building. You can make the greatest bomb. No matter what it is, eventually it's going to go away. Yep. It's doomed. Yep, it's a temporary. God has been here, as far as we know, and from his word, just thousands and thousands of years. Yep. Why people think that he's suddenly going to go away because they have stopped believing in him or they are trying to get rid of him. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to go away. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's, they act like it's just some paper God. Yeah. Uh, yet they turn to other things that are far more fallible than he, than he, they see him as. It's just amazing to me. Yep. So don't fall into that trap. And don't get yourself all worked up about what's happened. It, I mean, yeah, it makes you angry. It, it makes you sad. You're going you're gonna to have those emotions. But when it happens, lean on God. Yeah. Lean to the yeah. Lord. Call on him yeah. first. Yeah, well, it says fix your heart on him, you know. And the other one says trust in the Lord. Um, trust in the Lord or fix your heart on him. Or another, I think another one says fix your eyes. It might say that later on in here too, but... Um, we fix our focus. We put our focus on him. We don't put our focus on what is going on in the world because what is going on in the world is temporary, but God is forever. And, you know, what his promise is and everything that he has over at Trump's, <laughs> Trump's <laughs> everything else. <laughs> I used to get mad, mad or just angry when my football team would lose. I mean, I was a big right. University of Michigan fan. And then I, I would just get down, and then I started thinking about it a little bit and praying over it. I thought, what am I doing this to myself for? This is a football game. Yeah. There's going to be more in the future. There have been hundreds of thousands of games played in the past, and yep. it means little to me. Yep. So why do I let it bother me? And this is like anything. Even this voting is far more important than a football game. But right. it still well, isn't the end of the world. 
it affects our lives. But even but even in a fa- in a in the midst of famine, if you've got your eyes focused on Jesus and you've got God put first, it doesn't matter if there's a famine around you or not. You're still going to prosper because we don't we're not ruled by this world. We're ruled by God, and we live in His kingdom. But you get to choose where you live. If you focus on the world and put it first, that's where you're going to get your riches and your security is from the world. But if we focus on God, we focus on Christ, then we get our inheritances from him. And that's where we get our security, not from the world. Yeah. I, I've, I've been to a lot of funerals. And every time I, you know, somebody has said, well, he had a lot of money or he had a lot of these things. You know, it's always about what he did in this world. And I just would turn to them and say, you know what? He's not taking one penny with him wherever he went. Yep. I said, I hope I, he went to a, a better place. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's not guaranteed. Yep. Not he accepted Jesus as a savior. Yep. There's only one way. <laughs> just look at you like, you're saying that hey, about this guy. You know, I'm sorry. Hey, you know I'm tired of hearing this. Oh, well, he's in a better place. Well, how do you know that? I mean, what did he do? What was he a Christian? Did he accept Jesus as a savior? I'm not so sure. I mean, you can't judge. We can't say who's really going to go and it isn't, but there are indications. And and if he didn't do any of those things, if he never said that he believed in Jesus, if he didn't say that and live it, there's doubt there. Yeah, and, and then I'm hoping that people now wake up. Right. They, they, you know, there's something more important than a lot of the things that are going on right now, and I need to look at my life and where it's focused. Yeah. Let's hope that happens. Yeah. But th- th- this really kind of, you know, I'm not sure why David wrote this, or if he had it written, why he did, but it. I, looking at mine uh, in my Bible, it it was set up more in a, uh, like a almost like a hymn because there were each uh, verse was set up more like a hymn. Well, it says a, a poetic praise by King David. Right. So it was one of his songs. So definitely a lot of wisdom there. Uh, it, it and it really puts it in perspective. I mean, the one thing I have problems with is being meek. I mean. You know me. I'm not exactly the meekest person in the world. So that's a really tough one for me. I just uh, I thought, well, man, be meek. I'm not sure. It's just not me. Listen, I, I have to be honest. Uh, and it's tough. So you, you got to pray about it and hope. But I'll, I'll tell you, over the years, as I've gotten more and more into the word, I have changed. I, I'm not, I don't worry about a lot of things that I used to worry about. I don't let these things drive my whole mentality uh, like I used to instead of focusing on God and focusing on his power rather than what some cheesy politician or whatever or things going on in my life. The COVID, for example, I didn't panic. When, when I found out that she, my wife had the COVID, okay, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to go home. We're going to relax. We're gonna, just going to take care of ourselves, and it's going to go away eventually. And it did. Yep. And, and, the, and we probably were prime candidates for being in the hospital. It's statistically speaking, we could have died. Yep. We could have been very sick, but praise God. Praise God it didn't happen. Yeah, I talk about, you know, Zycam. I talk about vitamin D, and a lot of those things are part of God's will. But... He's right. also, it's also part of it is relying on him. Well, you got to be him first. His will is that everybody be healthy and whole, but um, we have we have the right here. He's telling us, you know, don't follow the wicked, don't follow the ways of the world. We have the 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 freedom to choose where we stand. Don't rely on the ways of the world exclusively, because you're going to get into trouble right away. You can use wisdom, but you got it. Got you know, but you got to put your trust in God above everything else. Well, and God tells us what to do. We all talked about that, I think, last time. Yeah. Not on tape or wherever it was. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and it disappeared. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so verse four says, make God the utmost delight and pleasure of your life, and he will provide for you what, your desi what you desire most. Give God the right to direct your life, and as you trust him along the way, you'll find he pulled it off perfectly. Now, okay. stop right there for a second. When it says, this, this is the difference between, um, I guess, a baby Christian and people who are more mature. Uh, they, they believe in uh, God, they believe that Jesus you know, died for them, etc. But what they don't do, and what I didn't do way back when, I'm talking decades, oh, God, sounds horrible, doesn't it? But <laughs> decades ago, I would try and rely on myself and try to get myself out of problems. And I for, I was a Christian, yeah. but I forgot what the main thing I should have been doing. Relying on God, looking to him first. Yep. And it says it right there. Give God the right to direct your life. Well, that's that's a lot. Of, and we I discussed this with a, a young man um, down in Arkansas. And he said he was trying to get his life back in, in, you know, back in order and get his life back right with God. And I asked him, I said, well, have you ever, I was like, you know, there's a difference between going to church and giving your life to God. Really, I mean, you can go to church and, and you're there, yay. But, I mean, if you have really given your your whole life over to him, you've made him a lord of your life. You've given him that right to direct your to your life. I, and I told him, I said, you know, when I first got saved, yeah, I got, I got saved when I was 14, but it was more of a, a you get out of jail, you know, get out of jail card. Yeah. <laughs> it was... The, the smoking five by five card that said that you wasn't going to hell. And that was it. My life didn't change or anything else because I didn't know, I didn't learn, I didn't take the word and I didn't renew my mind. And when I got pregnant with Daniel at 15, I was like, okay, I can't live. I don't want my son raised like this. And so that was when I said, okay, God, I give you my life. You know, I make you Lord of my life. I don't want to be the same. And that's what he's saying here is give God the right to direct your life. And as you trust, it, as you trust him along the way, he'll, you'll find that he's pulled it off perfectly. That's the thing. You know, we have to give him control and it's like, you know, I, and realize, Hey, I don't know what's best. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to trust in you. And I ask you to direct my steps in the way I should go. Right. Well, I, I as, as human beings, we're not perfect. We're not going to be able to see in the future like God can. God does. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, the thing is, we got to remember that we actually live, yes, we live in a physical world, but the real world is spiritual. And it's actually the spiritual that directs the physical. Right. So there's a lot of stuff happening right now um, in the midst of this election, in the midst of the world that we can't physically see because there is a spiritual battle happening. And that's why prayer is so effective and important that we keep praying and don't give up hope because it is a spiritual battle and we just need to keep pressing forward. I really believe that what's happened here is going to bring more good from it than we realize right now. It's going to open some eyes and there's going to be a lot of, um, a, a lot of uh, power, the, the evil powers that think that they have won for a long time and think that they've had a stronghold that's going to come crumbling down. Yes. So, so verse six, um, he, will, uh, he will appear as your righteous, righteousness as sure as the dawning of a new day. He will manifest as your justice as sure as, and strong as the noon sun. Quiet your heart in the presence and pray. Keep hope alive as long as you long for the God to come through for you. And don't think for a moment that the wicked in their, pro in their prosperity are better off than you. Stop right there for a second. One thing I just thought just a little while ago, and this fits exactly what I was thinking about. So I've known personally a lot of people that are rich. I mean, when you're talking a lot of money, millions of dollars in some cases. And these people, for the most part, 
were very unhappy. I mean, I'm not kidding you. They, they were unfulfilled. They were unhappy. They drank a lot. They went uh, to drugs. I, it just amazed me. Yet they had a lot of money. They, they have all kinds of things that I never have, never will have. But I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> I'm in better shape than they are. Because yeah. I have God and they didn't. Yeah. And it's really a shame. You, you, you know, you, I wish at that time I had been a little bit more spiritual. I probably would have been able to talk to them, you know, to get them on the right path. But if I could. I, but I, I, like I said, I, I've seen these people with lots of money and they meant nothing. Well, like he says, he says, uh, quiet your heart in his presence and pray. So, you know, don't be anxious about what's going on. You know, be patient and and still and and wait on him i mean he's if if you have god in your life you have peace even especially the more mature you are like you said you used to worry a lot and stuff and i i used to worry and get panicky and stuff but if you have anxiety or and a lot of this stuff is bothering you then you got to get back and renew your mind into what god says about the situation and that brings peace that's where we get our peace is we have, as it says, your hope alive because we know God's going to come through for us. That's where our hope it lies in is because we just know no matter what's going on in the world, God's on our side. God's exactly. going to come through. Exactly. So, um, stay away from anger and revenge. Keep envy far from you and it only, for it only leads you into lies. Well, isn't that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not to be, not to say a pun, but it's, it, it's, uh, yeah, it lies. I mean, I just the last year, like, wow. I mean, you hear, you see these politicians, and they look right in the camera on the, for their political ads, and they they say they mouth the truth. I mean, not a truth, but a a lie. Yeah. You know, it's a lie. They must know it's a lie, yeah. but they say it anyway. Like, wow. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I just, I, even, I can't, I mean, I don't know how they can do it. Well, then the next part of that says, like, like I said, it says, keep envy far from you, for it will only lead you into lies. For one day the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will, be, will live safe and sound with blessing overflowing. That's what we have to remember is, you know, they, they, it may look like the wicked is winning or the wicked is won. Or they've had a victory but in the end it says that they will be destroyed and we those that trust in the lord will be safe and they will have blessing overflowing blessing okay so, into what we've got here the overflow <laughs> yep <laughs> just a little while longer and the god ungodly will vanish you will look at the look for them in vain but the humble of heart will inherit every promise and enjoy abundant peace. Oh, is he talking about the end of the world there? I mean, uh, in the pretty much, you know, I mean, it almost sounds like revelation. It's all, it's all the way it is. It does sound like it, but it's at every day. I mean, God, if we put our trust in God, God is always the victor. I mean, he's always going to win. Look at the, you know, the Egyptian, or not the Egyptians, but the Israelites when they crossed over to, over the Red Sea and they came into the land of giants. Right. You know, it looked impossible. They, they were in a land by a very strong kingdom that should have out, um, you know, should have outweighed them in strength by a hundred times. But because God was on their side, the Israelites won and everyone feared the Israelites because they knew God was on their side. And when we got to remember that every day, especially when we're going through this stuff, if you trust in God and you believe God and you put God first, everything you do, God is on your side. Well, I mean, good example is David and Goliath. I mean, yep. that battle there, I mean, everybody laughed at David, you know, and so did Goliath, but, uh, Yep. Found out in the end there that uh, God is far more powerful when even with a little man like, uh, or well, he wasn't even a man, it was really a boy up against this giant. Yep. You know, so, so, yeah, it's analogous to all the things that we face. We have a lot of Goliaths in our lives, 
and, the, and people they laugh at us. Well, in the end, they're going to be sorely sorry. They'll be sorry for what they've said and done, but it'll be too late. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's the thing. You know, this is it. It's for today, and we got to remember that it's for today. Can you mute that? But we got to remember that it's for today, and that you know this it it applies to today, not. Yeah. Well, it probably applies both. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, that's why Revelations was written. It wasn't written just as a, uh, well, a revelation to talk about the future. Uh -huh. it, there were some warnings in there, you know. I mean, and there were some uh, odd things, you know, images and so on. But a lot of it applies to us anyway, every day. Well, we got to remember that as time gets closer, and we get closer and closer to the day that Jesus comes and returns, um, you know, there's going to be a bigger difference between evil and, and righteousness. There's going to be, there's going to be a definite, a definite line drawn in the sand, basically. So, you know, like um, the, uh, now I forgot the town, the town that was burned up. <laughs> um, yeah, but in, the, in the Old Testament, the, the um, Sodom and Gomorrah, is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, that, that one. I was like, guess, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, they they sent angels in there to go see if it was as evil as they had actually heard. Oh, okay. It was so evil that they, they, um, the people were banging on, on his door saying, where are the, your visitors? We want to have sex with them. I mean, they were literally, I mean, it was so evil. It comes to that point where and as we get closer and closer to the end, evil is going to be a very apparent and good is going to be very apparent. And it's going to, but the stress at the same time and, and the pressure of the world is going to get stronger and stronger. Well, I, if you look at what's going on right now, you, what you're saying there is very true. Uh, I have never seen a time in my 71 years, and I used to be pretty observant about what things, even when I was like eight or nine or 10. But you can see now, even more so, the difference between right and wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the way the people who support the wrong side of things, they, how they try and make it sound better, sound good, like it's something that's really good to do. Even though, and I've heard, heard people on Facebook, for example, or Reddit anyway, say that they don't understand what's going on, that they see that things that used to be right are now wrong. and what was wrong before is not right. And I said, it's, what's happening now, it's still, nothing's changed. Everything that used to be right, it's still right. Yeah. It's only because they are saying it's opposite. But it's yeah. not because God has said it, yeah. it's because they but are saying it. There's pressure to, to change your thought process. Well, and sure. there's pressure to leave the gospel behind because it's old fashioned mm -hmm. or well, that's a bigotry. No, I mean, if you look at the Bible, God set this in order from the beginning. So it's right. This is what's right. This is what's wrong. I mean, God says, I give a set before you life and death. And then he says, choose life. And he gives you the answer for Pete's sake, <laughs> you know? So he gives us, he gives us um, our moral guide right there in the Bible and tells us this is what's right. This is what's wrong. And as we get closer and closer to the end, the pressure becomes really, um, you know, they're trying to get us to sway. Satan's trying to get us to sway away from the Bible and the biblical truth and, and call it unpolitically correct or whatever. Well, guess what? I don't think Jesus was very politically correct anyway. So <laughs> he didn't really care. <laughs> First of all, Jesus or God, I mean, God and Jesus, they realize, number one, that any leader we have on this earth is going to be imperfect. Yeah. So there's no such thing as a perfect. Well, he even told them, you know, when they first, when they, the Jews at first asked for a king, because they didn't have a king. They had God. Right. And so they had a priest, and the priest would speak and prophets. to God, you know, and back and forth and, and give them their moral, you know, what they should do or what they shouldn't do. But they wanted to be like everybody else, and they wanted a king. And 
that really and he says no you don't really want a king because if you have a king this is what the, he's going to enslave your people he's going to do this he's going to do that and he warned them but they insisted so god gave them what they wanted and all it's done is cause trouble <laughs> well i mean we got to put god first always got to put god first <laughs> you only have to look at herod during jesus time i mean the first thing he tried to do and, and did do was kill every firstborn in israel Yep. I mean, t think about that for a minute. How horrible. If that had happened now, can you imagine what that would cause? I mean, to, to go and kick, well, now that I think about it, we are doing that, aren't we, through abortion? Yep. yep. Well, yeah, that's... But, but if you think about that, just that one thing that he did was horrible. Just because he want, didn't want somebody to take over the throne. He was afraid of this supposed king that was born. But he misunderstood the whole the whole thing that was going on with Jesus. Yeah. He didn't understand it. But because of his ignorance, he destroyed a lot of lives. Right. And this is the, what's wrong with government today or even way back. The, it, it hasn't changed. It hasn't changed one iota. No, we got every time oh, God. a leader has absolute power, it goes horribly wrong. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Well, you know, people meant people are corrupt and they're easily to be easy to be corrupted. And you, know, you get power, and power corrupts, and money corrupts because they, they it changes their thought process on how they think and how they see things. If you have God first and you put God first, He can keep your mind, you know, on the right path. But you have to put God first, and that's one thing I, I really um, I really like about Trump, and he is he's told people that he is a non-denominational Christian. And Principally because, well, I won't mention the name of the church, but uh, the church they used to belong to is known as a very liberal, quote-unquote, church that uh, accepts abortion and so on and so forth. And that's not acceptable to him. So he made... A yeah, you see a lot of, you see a lot of, of uh, a churches. I mean, and it's sad to say this, but you see a lot of churches falling under the pressure of political views, and they're accepting things that God tells us are not acceptable. Abortion, um, same-sex sex marriages, um, all this different kind of stuff that God says no, and, you know, that it, it the reason, and the reason people don't understand the reason he says no is because it's devastating to the people that are involved in it. Exactly. You know, it, it hurts them, and it doesn't hurt for just a little while. It's long lasting, and it hurts them, and then it hurts those around them. So, I mean, he exactly. tells us yeah. things to keep us on the right path and on healthy choices. <laughs> just the issues you mentioned, you're right. Well, the reason why God was against them, the reason why he made them the sin because he didn't want us to get involved in those things because they will hurt you the person yeah, hurt you. is supposed to be part of the issue it's not about me no i mean my my uh, opposition to abortion is not about me it's going to hurt the person and it uh, certainly of course kills a baby yeah. just starting right from there that's a horrible thing yeah. i don't know i don't I listen to people who try and justify abortion. Well, you know, it, it makes them safe abortions. Ah, I see. So the sin of killing a baby is, is okay because you're going to help that woman who has the baby in her. I gotcha. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. No, it, what it sounds like, it sounds like Satan when he's talking to Eve. Exactly like him. Yep. Twisting the things around, making it sound, oh, no, no, don't listen to God, because listen to me, I'm telling you, you really know what's going on, what's best for you. Yep. Uh. So, um, verse 10 says, just a little while longer, and the ungodly will vanish. You will look at the, look for them in vain, but the humble of heart will inherit every promise and enjoy abundant peace. Let, let the wicked keep plotting against the godly with their with all their sneers and arrogant jeers god does doesn't lose any sleep over them and knows their day is coming evil okay. ones take aim on the poor and helpless 
they are ready to slaughter those who do right. But the Lord will turn all their weapons of wickedness back on themselves, piercing their pride-filled hearts until they are helpless. So can you stop there for a second? I mean, the, the, I kind of chuckled when, it, when you're reading uh, verse uh, 12, and it said, with all their sneers and arrogant cheers. Yep. <laughs> I've been a lot of that for the last... I try to minister to people and try to explain to them why I feel the way I do or why I have accepted God's way of doing things. And I got a lot of jeers and sneers, but it isn't because they know what's right. It's because they're trying to make light of what I said. In their minds, back in their little tiny brains somewhere around in there, they know what's right, but they're trying to make light of it. They're trying to... Uh, what's the word? Dismiss what I'm saying. Yeah. Make, well, it doesn't really mean that's anything. The, that's the thing. You, you know, Satan has a lot of them yeah. deceived. It's like, well, you know, it ain't really hurting anything. But, you know, and, and, you know, or they're more interested in the pros what they think is going to prosper them. But in the end, he tells us right here, in the end, their day is coming. It may look like they're okay now and like, they're prospering and things are going their way, but their day is coming. And it's going to be, uh, it'll be a slaughter. I, I love how it, verse 15 says, but the Lord will turn all their weapons of wickedness back on themselves, piercing their pride-filled hearts until they are helpless. Every tool that they use to try to, to gain power and to get themselves ahead is going to be turned back on them. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think it is right now, actually. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, their own nastiness, their own hate, yep. uh, they use fear, but it's it's going to backfire on them. It will, and God's going to expose the truth. And, I mean, and It's what's interesting when it mentions about the poor. Evil ones take aim on the poor, and that's one of, unfortunately, I, it's something that I've always been against is when, when they use the poor, they keep playing on their sympathies, keep telling them they're going to give them more and more and more from the government. I mean, they're buying their vote, let's face it. And and what's and the you know what the result of that is? Because, again, I've been involved in politics. I've followed this. So you, you ask yourself, well, if they've given all this money, and it's all trillions of dollars, and, and they've done all these things, supposedly that's good for these people, then why is it, like, for example, Detroit, 35% are still in poverty after all these trillions of dollars have been spent. Yep. And they're telling us that this has been good for them? No, it's to buy their vote. And they don't yep. really care because yep. you can tell the things that they say. They take the self-confidence away and they take they, they take um, they strip uh, the people's self-worth away. Yeah, they strip their self-worth and, and, and pride and they make them reliant on them. And so what happens? These people on anybody, they can actually, if you, if you empower them to do and gain their own wealth, they were, they do a much better than when you, you try to pacify them. Well, people that, that not only help themselves, but help others, when they are able to help somebody else. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. This is. It's empowering. It's, it's an epiphany. It's, yeah, it's empowering. It, it helps you more. And w one of the the things of the black people when they when they first moved to Detroit, a lot of them moved to Detroit, and I was living in Detroit, and there were no more. You could not find more spiritual people than black people. It's just that's not. A, I'm not saying it a racist. I'm not putting down white people, but they were very spiritual. Yeah. But what happened is as the well, a lot of these politicians saw a vulnerability there because they came from an area where they were mistreated. There's no question. Yeah. They were mistreated. They were mistreated because of their race. It was horrible. But a lot of politicians saw this and tried to use it. And that's well, what was sickening. They, had, they tried to hide the truth from them. And, 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 rather, and we see that a lot with, with um, history. They, they try to hide the, the, the true history of what actually happened to make them feel like they were they were um, victims. Well, why do you think they want to tear down statues and everything? They don't want to remember. They don't what want to remember who who the I mean the people they they're 
they they're tar tearing down people that were against slavery and actually helped set slaves free and they're tearing down their statues saying they were they were um you know they were they were racist and it's like um no they fought for you but you don't know that because they've taken the history away and they're hiding it from you the, the most the one that stands out the most that what you just said is Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. They, they were tearing down statues of Abraham Lincoln. Really? I, mean, I, I couldn't believe it. But yeah. it, it was explained. One guy actually said, well, he, he wasn't for a, a he, he wasn't a black person. He didn't understand black people or something like that. I go, what? <laughs> so I, in, in order to understand another race, I have to be that race. That, that doesn't make any sense. No. Uh, excuse me, I'm part of the human race. And really, in God's sight, there isn't any race. It doesn't mean anything. Period. No. It doesn't matter if you're black or Asian or Indian or anything else. We're, we're let this stop this racial thing. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's another false lead of, that's what that's what Satan does. He uses well, the abilities of people. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he does it through deception and confusion. I mean, that's... And we've that's done a lot of that this last year. So, okay, back to 16. It is much better to have a little combined, have a little combined with much of God than to have a, have the fabulous wealth of the wicked and nothing else. Which goes so, back to what I just said. Yeah. I, I have never yeah. seen more lost, I'm sorry, I have never seen more lost people than the people who have a lot of money. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, well, it's, 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 you know, it's, I mean, if you got to have anything, it's better to have God than it is to have the wealth of the world. You know, it's just that it's way better to have God because God's going to provide everything you need anyway. So you don't need the world's wealth. Exactly. For the Lord takes care of all his forgiven ones while the strength of the evil will surely slip away. Day by day, the Lord watches the good deeds of the godly and he prepares them for his forever reward. Even in a time of disaster, he will watch over them, and he will always have more than enough, no matter what happens. I love that because I mean that's one of, you know that's one of the deceptions that that um, I, and I remember this really closely actually when I when I first um, came to Christ, it was like okay if you did if you did good and you followed God and you sought after God, it seemed like things always got hard, you know. And it was like, and it, and it, because Satan don't want you to, to follow God, so he makes he he kind of turns up the pressure, so to speak. Oh, oh, we'll see how serious you really are. Right. What he's really trying to do is get you to go back to your old ways. Right. Because it's easier to be to follow the world and follow, um, you know, follow Satan and the world, than it is to to push against that and follow God. Because follow. Well. It's not easy. I mean, look at Jesus. When he was here, how many people, they tried to kill him every time he turned around. They, they tried to call, well, they did kill, you know, finally, eventually got quite a few of the disciples killed. And that was because they stood for what God believed, what for what Jesus was here for. They stood with God. And because of that, trouble came. Well, it's, it's part of being in God's world or the world, the world, uh, that we know. Uh, here's the thing. The people, the Christians, for example, I'm just describe them as Christians, Christians and non-Christians. What's happening there is a Christian is not going to want to fool you to become a Christian. He, he doesn't want to do that. He wants you to become willingly to God and be a part of that because you'll grow. He knows, we know, that if you try and fool somebody to become, it's worthless. God doesn't want that. And, and the other thing is, the people that are on the evil side, the world side, they know, they, they'll use anything they can possibly do. They're going to try and fool you. They're going to lie to you. They're going to use false information. Anything they can do to get you away from God. Yeah, and that's the whole purpose. Right. The whole purpose is to keep you separated from God. And exactly. like, I remember that when, when I first became a Christian, it was like, well, if I every time I tried to do something right and follow God, it seemed like it got harder and harder. Well, that's because Satan doesn't want you to, to get there. You know, he doesn't want you to be close to God because he wants you to be on his team. Well, and it, it, it looks like I mean, 
when, when they say, for example, a lot of people say it's hard to forgive people. Of course it is. It's always harder to forgive than to hate them. It's easy to hate somebody. That's, a, that's no big deal. You can hate people and hold their offenses against them. I mean, that's really simple. But eventually, it's just going to poison you. Well, the only thing that does is hurt you. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt them at all. They'll go about their merry lives like nothing ever happened. Because right. It does, doesn't affect them, but it can destroy your life by holding Because they're already taken in anyway. So, oh. so it's, your hate's not, it's just going to, and actually, noticing, I've noticed a, a number of people uh, in Facebook, for example, they almost thrive on the hate. Yeah. You know, if they think somebody hates them, they just love it. I hate it, drama. You, you know, you got to. But the hate in their, in their perspective, it, it's not my hate. It, it's, it's what they say is hate. And, and that's the problem that because they try and turn around what you say as hate. But, yeah. but it's really just saying, no, this is what God says. It's not about uh, being mean to people. God doesn't want to be mean. He's trying to keep us from doing what's wrong and it's going to hurt us. That's what all this, these sins are about. Yep. It's either something that you're going to do to somebody else or yourself. And eventually it's all going to come back on you in the first, second place. Yeah. So that's why God doesn't want us to do these things. Right. It, it's just never productive. Yep. It says all the enemies of God will perish for the wicked have only a mind momentary value a fading glory then one day they will vanish here today gone tomorrow they break their promises borrowing money but never paying it back the good man returns what he owes with some extra beside the lord is the lord's blessed ones receive it all in the end but the cursed ones will be cut off with nothing to show for themselves the steps of the God pursuing ones follow firmly in the footsteps of the Lord and God delights in every step they take to follow him. You know, and what's, uh, that's a good uh, section there. Uh, but what I was thinking is all the enemies of the God will perish, but the, the day they vanish, they're going to be gone. Well, think about it. All these, look, if you look back in history, all the great empires, where are they? Where's the Roman Empire? Where's the, the Greek Empire? Where's the Persian Empire? Where's the Mongol Empire? Gone. Yep. Gone and forgotten. They did evil things. All yep. these evil people, Mao Zedong was, they said, was responsible for tens of millions of people dying. He actually killed them or had them killed because they politically opposed him. But where is he? Gone. Well, He's nobody cares. You know, it's like people celebrate the death of somebody like that. But... Um, a, 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 a good person, a godly person, when they, they affect the world that's around them with good and blessings and, you know, all these good things, when they leave, they are missed. You know, people, people talk about them. They're, they actually have a legacy that continues to live on where like somebody like, like um, Hitler yeah, he has a, a legacy, but he is hated by the world. You know, he, everybody hates him. There's people that, that kind of idolize him, but it's all for naught because he's gone. He has nothing left here except for a story, and most of that is hate. And no, nobody wants to live up to that. Now, a good godly person, they they bless people around him. People talk to him. They, they talk about how how much they've affected their lives or how much they've changed their lives for the good, not for evil. And they, they encourage and uplift people around them. So when they're gone, um, the people that they've affected continue that legacy on because it, it, you know, it just continues from one generation to another where the other one, like you said, it, it's, they're just forgotten. They're, they're gone without a trace. There's, and there's a lot of examples of that. I mean, Mother Teresa, for example, would probably be the opposite of what Hitler was. Right. Because when you think of someone who is good and who helped people, you think of her or somebody like her. And, 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 and you're they inspire right. you to want to do more. Exactly. It's um, our, uh, our, the things that we want to do in this world uh, for good 
uh, it's almost endless. I mean, we could go on and on and on if we tried, uh, but it's at some point we will be gone from this world. Yeah. But the good part of it is we will not be gone forever. Yeah, we will live in eternity with Jesus. I, I feel I feel for people who uh, don't have that hope. Yeah. I feel for people who are living in the world now that are they believe that all these evil things that are now good yep. that used to be bad, but and they think that's going to be forever. I'm going to tell you right now it will change again. Yeah. Because it always has. Yeah. And, and and if you look at history, you go back through history every evil man that ever came up, every uh, evil empire, had, this is no longer around. Yep. It will disappear. It will. Yep. And we'll hope and praise God that we uh, we'll be able to see once again to turn around. You know, the United States is the only kingdom that was founded um, for the sole reason that they wanted to worship God. On their, you know, they didn't want to be forced um, they wanted the freedom to worship the Lord. Right. It's actually, the first, the first kingdom, if, if you would want to call it that way, or the first nation that has actually survived as long as it has. They, they, the statistics show that countries, most countries will produce a constitution and it changes every seven years because it, it is not followed by biblical principles right. and, and so it's continually evolving and changing with with the times and the united states built themselves on the word of god they used the word of god to, to write the constitution and to come up with the principles and actually how they set the government up came from the biblical standards all of that and here we are how many hundred years you know and it's still living and we still have our original constitution that tells you you know that when you put god first you're strong exactly but if you don't then you know i wouldn't be looking at the communist countries and stuff as a, as as a um as an idol china or you know as a standard because they're going to fall that those those kingdoms don't last very long well, and the interesting part of that is, and again, I've been in a lot of discussions with people about the Constitution, and it's been under attack by the other side, and, and it's been under attack because they don't, it doesn't allow them to do what they want to do, and one of the things it doesn't allow them to do is use the government against us. If, if we follow the Constitution, that's what the, the Constitution originally did. It protected the common citizen. It didn't protect the government. It protected us yep. from the government. Yep. And, and that's that was the main thrust of what that, and you're right, it was built, if you look at the the, the, the uh, uh, July 4th, when, when they declared our independence, the Declaration of Independence, it's based on what uh, God, it, it, the belief in God, and, and, the, and the inalienable rights. Yep. That's what it was based on. And people are trying to say, well, no, the Constitution doesn't really mention God. But it's, it's all the principles that he set forth are in there yep. for our basic rights. The base, And the irony is that the people that don't like the Constitution, the people that attack us because we're Christians, their right to say that is protected by the Constitution. Exactly. Exactly. It's well, just... Uh, well, how do you know that it was uh, that, that they based it off of, of God's word? Well, if you look at if you know God's word, you'll find it. why. Second of all, the, our first president said, you know, we will be your, you know, you will be our God and we will be your people. That was our first president. Right. That was his very, his, his words were, we, you will be our God and we will be your people. Obviously, that is exactly why this nation has prospered and stayed as strong as it has because we put God first. Exactly. Well, and, and if you uh, look at what happened in the Revolutionary War, this was a virtual miracle. We were going up against the most powerful nation in the world with the most powerful Navy, bar none. This, this country, England, had, had control over most of the world. And we came up against them, a ragtag army that was barely fed. 
barely clothed, came up against the most powerful nation and beat them. Yep. That's, a, it was a miracle. Yep. Nobody could understand how that could have happened. Yep, because they had God in there, because they put God first. And that's, you know, that's what we're reading through here. Like he said, he said, put, put me first. Let me, you know, invite me into your life and he will keep us secure. He will, he put, he will get us through. Exactly. So we'll be on the head and not the tail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 24. If, if they stumble badly, which is what he's saying, the first the verse before him said that if we follow him in the footsteps of the Lord, God delights in every step they, that they take to follow him. If they stumble badly, they will still survive. For the Lord lifts them up with his hands. I once was young, but now I'm old. Now, once I was found a lover of God forsaken by him, nor have any of their children gone hungry. Instead, I found the godly ones to be generous, to be the generous ones who give freely to others. Their children are blessed and become, and become a blessing. That's what we've just talked about. That it passed on because their children are blessed and then they become the blessing. If you truly want to dwell forever in God's presence, forsake evil and do what is right in his eyes. The Lord loves it when he sees us walking in his justice. He will never desert his devoted lovers or his devout, yeah, devoted lovers. They will keep, be kept forever in his faithful care, but the descendants of the wicked will be banished. The faithful lovers of God will inherit the earth and enjoy every promise God of God's care, dwelling in it, the peace forever. God's lovers make the best counselors. Their words possess wisdom and are right and trustworthy. The ways of God in their hearts, and they won't swerve from the path of steadfast righteousness. Evil ones spy on the godly ones, stalking them to find something that they could use to accuse them. They're out for the kill. But God will foil their plot. The godly will not stand condemned when brought to trial. So don't be impatient for the Lord to act. Keep moving forward steadily in his ways, and he will exalt you at the right time. And when he does, you will possess every promise, including your full inheritance. You'll watch with your own eyes and see the wicked lose everything. I already have seen this happen. Once I saw a wicked and violent man overpower all who were around him, demeaning tyrant with his pride and oppressive waves. Then he died and was forgotten. Now no one cares that he is gone forever, but you can tell who are blameless and spiritually mature. What a different story with them. The godly ones will have a peaceful, prosperous future with a happy ending. Every sinner will be destroyed or, or obliterated. They will utter failures with no future. But the Lord will be the savior of all who love him. Even in the, their time of trouble, God will live in them as strength. Because of their faith in him, their daily portion will be father help. It will be a father's help and deliverance from evil. This is true for all who turn to hide themselves in him. And I was just like, wow. I mean, the one, the, this part right here where it talks about the, the, they'll try to trap the godly man and, and um, bring him to trial. <laughs> well, yeah, I can't wow. He was in one of the, uh, let's see. Just, I'm trying to see. That's a different version, but it said something about how they will spy on them. Yep. I mean, on the, um, well, that, peace today. That, that's exactly what the thirty-two. Yeah, yeah right there. It's no one spy, spy on God, 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 stalking them to find something. They're doing that now. Yeah, exactly. But exactly I, I love that because it says. I mean, that's exactly what they do. You know what? What they're going to do? They're going to try to. They're going to try to trip you up and accuse you. And make you look like the bad one. 
But then it says, they God do it the plots and God and the godly will not stand condemned when brought to trial. We seen that. We seen exactly. that when they when they tried to to bring Trump. Well, yeah, Trump. They, they have these illegal wiretaps. It's just, it's amazing. <laughs> They, they, they tried to accuse him, and, and he's still our president because, oh, they got the words impeached, but they didn't get nothing else. <laughs> so, and I, I just loved the end of that, and, and it, it goes right into what we were talking about before, is when, if you're an ungodly person, you're not going to be remembered, but if you're godly and you're following after God, it goes from your children to the, their children to their children, and it continues. I mean, you're... you're your um, legacy continues and it grows. Well, well, there's a couple of things that have been going on lately too that they they try to use. One of them is unity. Uh -huh. That sounds good, but here's the problem: it sounds like something Saint would be trying to to trip you up. Unity in what? How am I going to be right. unified with somebody who believes in unlimited abortion, right up to the time the baby could be born naturally? Yep. Um, take away all of our rights, our basic rights. I, I mean, I just, I have trouble with being in unity with somebody like that. Yeah. Well, then that was the last thing that, that Jesus actually prayed for was unity. But it was the unity in Christ. Unity under God. But see, that's not what they're talking about. There's a different kind of unity. Exactly. That's what I'm saying is you, I mean, he, he, that was his, his, his prayer for the church was to be unified in Christ. Right. Everything that God, God and his precepts, that we'd be unified in him, not all this other other stuff. I mean, that's... Well, one of the last things that, and I hate to pick on Biden, but let's face it, he's who we're talking about. And one of the things he said is, I'm a man of faith. And so did Kamala. She says, I'm a woman of faith. Really? So I said... That's interesting. He's a Catholic, or supposedly he belongs to the Catholic Church, and yet he says he's a man of faith. Faith in what? Yeah, and you can be a faith. And, and, and here's the thing: faith. You know, you can say you're a man of faith, but it, I, I think he's a man of faith in government, man of faith in science, and he puts his un, unyielding, unquestioning faith in these things. But why didn't he say, "I'm a Christian"? Because if you're a Catholic, Catholics consider themselves Christian. He didn't say he's a Christian. He says a man of faith. It was meant to deceive you. Yeah. That's the way I see it from very all kinds of perspectives. I looked at this and I prayed about it. And I said, this man is trying to deceive us. That's where they, they twist things, you know, to make it sound good. But that's that's what Satan does. I mean, that's that's his perfect deal. He's a little old man coming to the little girl with some candy in his hand. Yeah. And saying, little girl, look what I've got for you, and trying to entice her into his car. Yep. Well, we got to remember that you know we're—I mean, we're not—we don't hate anybody. No, that is not the point. We don't hate any or the Harris or anybody else because we know that they there is a spirit behind them that's driving them. And well, and the point is, bro, the the election was not about Biden, not about Trump, and somebody people say, "What are you crazy?" No, it wasn't about them. It, it was a deception. It was a, it was a deflection of talking about the real issues. You notice how few of the issues we actually talked about, or you went on Facebook or wherever you look, it wasn't talking about the actual issues. It was always an attack on each other, it, mainly an attack on, on Trump. And Trump was trying to get the issues out, but nobody was listening because they were attacking him. It was all about his personality, all about how he talked. That's what it was about. And I wasn't voting for a saint. Yep. It was all about a sleight of hand. We, we, we try to get your attention here while we do something else when you're not looking. Well, yeah, it's the old guy. It's the old game with the, the three shell game, you know, when you're flipping them around and the peas under one of those shells, supposedly. Well, guess <laughs> what? Pick up all the shells. It's not there. Right. Exactly. Yep. So. Well, I, I was encouraged by, by 37 because it just reminds us that, that um, you know, it doesn't matter what the world's doing, what's going on. It doesn't matter how things appear. Um, God's in control, and God's going to win in the end, and Satan's not, the evil's not going to win. So 
that should give us hope and remind ourselves um, not to look at what's going on. You know, the media says one thing, what um, is it's not true, you know, and, and there is no proof of it. And there actually quite a few of this stuff sounds like it's turning around pretty fast. Right. And, um, well, I mean, the media is a this world. It's just this is part of that whole dynamic that goes on in this world, and they support it. And, and they're getting worse and worse as far as people that are running it. They're getting worse, and they're trying to use it to push what the world wants. Let's face it. It's, there's very few – there are media outlets, but they're, they're almost being overwhelmed with all this other – Yeah, channel. I pretty much watch the Victory Channel, and that's it. And if you don't have Victory Channel, it's on Dish. Uh, you can get it on Roku, or you can go to www.govictory.com. And they, I love they have one that they put on there that's called Victory um, America Stands. And America Stands, they have news deals and stuff. They bring all they they bring the truth to what's actually going on, and they don't try to to you know say one thing and or uh, you know, go off of everybody else's stuff yeah yeah they add on they take away things that might they just give the you the fact yeah. so most of the media outlets today are supporting an agenda let's face well, it they like, an agenda. You know, um, they certainly don't like christians yeah they give you the actual numbers and then they tell you that you know this many votes came in afterwards or that they have the 132,000 in question and, you know, so you get actual numbers instead of what the media wants you to know. <laughs> so, but I, we will pray and, and end and I hopefully this is encouraging to people to, to, especially with things that's going on in the world that it doesn't matter what's going on. We still, our God is higher, you know, he's stronger and he's going to lift us out of this because he wants us ahead in, in the end. So. Exactly. So well, we will pray. So Father God, I just thank you for this time to, to get in your word. And I just thank you that you showed us Psalms 37 tonight to encourage us and to remind us that, that you're in control, that um, you've got this. And Father God, we, we believe that um, your word is true, that you lift up the righteous and, and um, prosper us. And we, it brings, when we stand with your word, Father God, it brings blessing upon us. No matter what's going on around the world, we can prosper in the middle of famine. Um, all of these things can be going on, but it won't affect your people when we trust in you. And I just thank you, Father God, that, that you can just give us encouragement, strength, and blessing. And Father, I just pray for this election. Father God, that, that you would bring the truth out. Father, that your angels would go out and minister to those people and guard the truth, Father God. We know that this is a spiritual battle and we just continue to pray and lift your hands up father and we just give you the praise and, and and thank you for everything that you've done and that we know that we can trust in you no matter what's going on around us and we have the hope that this is going to come out good in the end and that we will be on top because you said that you are an overcomer and we already have the victory and i just thank you for all of this and I thank you for your peace, and I thank you for the love and your wisdom that we can take with us every day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Oh, wait. I didn't want to do that. I want to stop recording. Hold on. <laughs>